Um, I guess my story is um, a bit, bit of a story about a leadership growth that I've been on over the last um, probably one to two years, but um, probably focus on the last sort of 12 months. Um, I'm using a different presentation thing, like you might, I don't know, it's called Prezi, it's um, not PowerPoint, so if it breaks, I'm really sorry. So I don't know if it'll survive. So um, I'd just like to equate, like, why am I here? So this is my daughter. Um, I was searching for pictures of the three of us, my wife, Mish, who some of you have probably met before. Uh, I couldn't actually find one in my computer, my laptop, because most of our computer uh, pictures are at home. So anyway, she's missing an action there. But this is our daughter, Emma. Um, that's really the main reason that I go to work every day. Um, I love helping people. That's, um, that's why I started in this business. And um, I'm probably, I'm addicted to winning. Like, I was an athlete as a kid, and I grew up like that way, and I, was, um, I, didn't, I don't come from a rich background, I don't come from a privileged background, that's for sure. And everything that I've done, and everything that I do, um, comes from in here, and um, everything that I make um, has come from in here. So when I look at um, someone like Emma, I think that she's, personally, I think she's really lucky, because, you know, we're... We're not, um, we're not rich by any standard at the moment, but we're not, um, we're definitely, we're definitely, like she's got some great opportunities that she's going to be able to take advantage of um, later in life. And I think she's lucky, but, you know, like I, I want to be able to pass on the same sort of ethics that I, that I sort of present as a person um, onto her. Um, and she is a character for anyone who's met her. So she's becoming more of a character. She's nearly three now, so she thinks she's the boss of the whole world. So um, a little bit about our NPE story. So it's, um, it's quite, um, it's quite, so first of all, like why did I join NPE? Um, I was sitting at my laptop um, thinking about how I could grow the business that I had at the time, which was really just me and one other person. And I was coaching um, probably three and a half days a week and making good money, um, probably making $100,000, $150,000 a year in revenue myself just coaching. So I was doing okay, but um, I didn't want to do that for the rest of my life. I wanted to be able to help more people. So first of all, to improve my lifestyle so that I didn't have to get up early most mornings. I didn't have to stay late. If I was going to have children, which we were thinking of at the time, then you know, I didn't have to stay late after work every night and you know, miss, my, uh, miss my child or children's growing up. To make more profit, because at the time, it wasn't really profit that I was making. It was more my own money that I was making. And then business partner Tom, he's, he's making his sort of income and then you know, put it together in a so-called business. It's really just two people having a job. And then to, the big one is to help me learn how to market and how to teach me how to sell. Um, if you put someone in front of me and they want to achieve something, I can pretty much guarantee you that they'll train with me after about 10, 15 minutes. Um, I know I'm really good at that, um, but in terms of selling like long-term strategies and also selling into if I was to engage staff, how am I going to convince them that I'm not the right person, but someone I trained and made into a trainer or I trained, made into a coach, how are they the right person? So there are four really big reasons that I came to NPE. My journey through NPE has been interesting. I think Sean sort of laughs a little bit sometimes when I found out how I started. I mean, I started, I bought a $97 package off the internet, came in this nice big sort of red folder. I followed every single thing in that folder. Um, so if you want to, if you want to learn from someone who's learned from following the instructions, I'm 95% there. Some of the things I don't do very well, but, um, but yeah, like if you want to learn about marketing, you follow the instructions that they give you and it does work because it's worked for me. It's worked to heaps of other people, but it's especially worked for how much money I initially spent. Then um, I saw an ad, like so a guy called Rick Isaac kept emailing me, driving me nuts, telling me to go to this thing called mega training and I thought it was a um, well, I didn't know what it was, but anyway. <laughs> so then I decided to go to that. So 2012, I came. We were, um, as I said, doing okay. And all of a sudden, I find myself signing up as a VIP because he sold the vision very well. Sean sold the vision really well. I met a whole bunch of people that were, you know, really happy with their business and were where I wanted to be. So then... Um, um, in 2014, I kept going, I kept chipping away, kept getting, you know, increasing my sales revenue, increasing my profit, um, getting quite happy with myself. 
Then 2014 spring training, um, I signed up to VIP Pro. Um, the main reason I signed up to VIP Pro, and if you're at a business point where you know, you're getting your weekly or monthly, whatever, coaching calls that you get, the main reason I signed up to VIP Pro is I wanted to spend more time with Sean. Um, not in a weird way, but because... Um, <laughs> <laughs> but because he's, um, to be honest, like I've met a lot of, lot of people and I've worked in different industries around um, and he's probably one of the pers people that I've most connected to um, in a business sense and the way he speaks to me. Um, I'm still a little bit scared of him, so he makes me do things that <laughs> I'm really uncomfortable with and that's what you need to do if you're in business. Oh, what happened? All right, that's exciting. All right. So... Just, just quickly, like um, looking at our values, like these are the values of our business. So I had different values three months ago. Then I sat my team down, and this is part of my little evolution of leadership. Um, a year ago, or a year and a half ago, I sat down on a plane coming home from um, um, an event that I was going to. It was a sporting event, and I decided that I'd write down all the names of my people that I employed, and I had, I think, I had ten people, and I wrote down yes and no, and nine out of ten were no. So I got rid of all of them. Um, and I don't mean just got rid of them, I'm a nice person at heart, and it was very, very hard to do, and I'm still working on one, and I don't know whether she's going to hang around for too long, but she tries hard, and that's her main thing. Mainly the thing was they just didn't agree with their values. I mean, they were doing things that are outside of those, so, you know, over the time I just made myself, and it's very hard because I'm very loyal, and very, the two things that I value, loyalty and honesty, so... Um, it was very hard for me, to, for people that have been loyal and turn up every day to say, look, I'm sorry, but you don't fit where I need to be right now is part of this business. So then, you know, take forward a year later, like I've built a team, and part of that is VIP Pro, the first leadership thing that um, Sean did with that, like changed my whole life. And that's, um, it was part of my challenge, and now it's part of my success, I believe, and what I've done over the last year is that I, we, I gave the opportunity to my team to come up with the new values for the business. So some people get really scared when they give opportunities to people because it's like, what are they going to say? What are they going to do? But in my little sphere, I just decided that I had a team that I was super happy with. I was super excited to go to work every day. I'd, I'd been able to get off the tools. So I wasn't coaching hardly anymore. Um, that was one of the things that Sean made me get really uncomfortable with because at the end of the day, like, I'm a coach. Like, I love coaching. I love winning with athletes. Um, you're going to see, like, one of our athletes that won something pretty cool on the weekend later, but, you know, I love doing that. That's, that's absolutely my passion. So I decided I'd need to put my passion into training my, my team and coaching them and making them, like, do the things that I've been able to do, take athletes on board and win championships with them rather than me do all of that. So these values are moderately different. The two things that are really different are the welcoming and the community. Um, I'm a nice person, but I'm very objective and I'm a scientist. Those two values will come up, they came up through our non-operational staff. Our two reception staff or two admin staff came up with welcoming and community. Um, none of our coaches came up with that. We came up with all the respect, ownership, excellence things, because that's what you want as a coach. You want your people to respect you, you want to respect them back, you want to take ownership, you want them to take ownership, and you want, um, you want them to be excellent. So the type of facility that we run um, is we target to business owners and very busy people, and we target athletes. And there are two main target markets. So we have a group training, a one-on-one -on -one training for program for really busy people, and we have a one-on-one -on -one training, semi-private, and a group training model for athletes. And they're really our defined markets now. We do a little bit of stuff around that, but that's our primary market. We have a really big multidisciplinary facility, so um, it's 500 square metres. We've got consulting rooms for physiotherapy, and my wife, Mish, she works as a physio, and we've just employed another physio as part of that. So it's a really diverse model, like the difference between those two people, but we've been able to, through these values, systemise, and our, our team on the day that we ran them through this team building day, we were able to systemise how we're going to offer this particular service to every single customer so it's the same. So whether you're an athlete or you're a business owner, whether you're 50 kilos overweight or you're 5 kilos underweight, you get the same level of service, you get the same systems. Um, and that's still a work in progress, but it's better than it was. So, I won't play that now. So, my challenges, 
have been leadership, so making myself uncomfortable as a leader. Don't just be a coach, be a leader. Transform people into better trainers. Don't transform athletes into better athletes. Let your, let your staff do that. New facility, so I, um, I spent about 300 and something thousand dollars on a new facility. I trained, I'd like Anthony, I'm training in a 50 square meter facility and I decided to upgrade. It's a really, really big decision and it's gonna take five years to really pay off in my mind and what I've planned, but in five years time, we'll have a facility, probably one of the best facilities in my opinion, north of, north of Brisbane. Um, so that was something that's really massively, and I've been on the phone to Sean, I've been on the phone to Dane. Um, I don't cry, but I was probably there. I was sweating tears anyway, sometimes. Um, but I was really struggling because the amount of money that you have to spend and the overheads and to run a facility like that is crazy. But the only way you do it is by having people that you respect that are on the other end of the phone saying, keep being uncomfortable, keep working hard, keep, keep looking at these numbers, keep going back to the basics. And then the systems to scale. So that's been a really big challenge. Like we're a little tiny facility, now we're a massive facility. Just simple things like being able to look from one end of the facility to the other and looking from here to that room away once upon a time and now having to look you know, 40 metres down and see someone doing something weird up at the other end and going, what's going on? Just the, the ability, just little things like making sure that people know exactly what's expected of them as an athlete, as a staff member. Like growing your team like that, you have to make sure. And I've really tried hard to, you know, it's taken that as a challenge and made it happen. <clears throat> um, so my successes, um, I've talked a little bit about that, but the VIP Pro program from um, N NPE, to, in my mind, like the coaching at NPE gets better every year that I've been here. The, the events definitely get better. Um, if I'm going to say anything to you, like that's what you try and come to. The events are where you get most of the, most of the big bucks because you're away from work and you get to think. When you're on the, on the phone coaching a lot of the time, thinking is tough because you've got interruptions or you've got things going on. But when you're here, you get to think and you get to plan and then you get to make sure it then happens when you go home. Um, my systems have been a success, so um, I've spent a lot of time and effort on our particular database that we use. I've spent a, a lot of time and effort on Infusionsoft making that our marketing system. Our marketing has then been a success. So the second VIP Pro meeting that we went to when Sean's gone through the marketing tools, like for me, I'm, a, I'm okay at writing, so I've been doing a bit more blogging and that's really increased our, um, increased our lead potential quite significantly because I'm writing to a very specific audience who then respond in kind. You're not writing general articles that just get 50,000 people looking or whatever. You're writing to 30 people or something like that that'll, that'll come to you with that one specific problem that you're writing about. And that was probably one of the best things that I learned. Be creative in your marketing. Be, be very target, be very specific. And if I can give you any advice, that's the thing that I would do. When you develop your target markets, make sure that you're dead set specific. Don't say you want a 20 to 50 year old person because I can tell you I'm 36 and if, if I'm not 20 anymore and I'm not 50, if you try and talk to me like a 50 year old, I'm probably going to turn off and I'm going to talk to a 20 year old, like I'm going to switch off too. It's very, very specific. Um, you know, 10 year age gaps or whatever, you know, like they're the things that I've learned and I've, I think that I've done reasonably well at with some of the numbers that I've achieved. So I'm in the unfortunate position at the moment where I've got too many leads to actually service um, and that's come purely from NPE. It hasn't come from me just making it up on the spot, I can guarantee because I tried that and I was useless. So then in our sales, like this is a progression. So 2012, we started with NPE, and this is where we're at in 2015. And I know that for some people, like 600 grand is like a lot of money or whatever, but um, our facility is a lot of money each year to kind of just open the door of. So for me, it is a bit of a, it, it is a bit tough. But once upon a time, like that 250 grand, that was a sticking point. So everyone has their own little problem that they'll face with a sticking point. What I've come down to is what I've got to do better is be more, be more, um, be more confident in, um, in setting my vision higher. So I've set my vision, I've got to kind of where I want to be. Now I've got to go again and I've got to go upwards again. And it's all about trying to surround yourself like with really high-minded people, like people that are really pushing themselves. I'm lucky in that a lot of my clients are big businesses and they push really hard. So we might get together 
you know, every couple of weeks and have coffee with a few people. And they're the people that really push you. They'll ask you, how you going? You'll ask them, how you going? You talk about your challenges, you talk about your struggles. It's networking on a one-to-one -one basis. And they're the sort of people that will refer to you because they know that you're seeking to grow. If you don't tell people you want to grow, they don't know, they will not refer to you because they don't know. But if you know, if they know that you want to grow, you want to go to another place, then they will actively look for people for you. And the same as in their business. If you know they want to grow, then my advice would be that you've been able to then help those people that help you grow their business. Um, well, just quickly, one quick example of that is a guy that I train. He owns a hotel chain. Um, we've, um, we've, gotten, like we've gotten him a contract with a sports team. Every time that they're in Brisbane, they stay with him. Just because I knew someone, they were chasing, they were chasing a good place to stay. I mentioned his name, I gave this guy his card, they rang him up and he's got a contract for the rest of the year with like a professional sports team to stay in their hotel. And it's worth like you know, a reasonable amount of money, he doesn't have to think about you know, finding people for rooms. It's just networking like that. So, so this is our lead generation. So this is probably the thing that's gone absolutely nuts. I mean, like in May, I generated like 128 leads. I, I feel really bad, but some of them we went back to, we didn't chase, we could not chase hard enough because we just didn't have the time. We don't, we don't actually have the staff to train them. We're putting people in group programs because we can't find time to train them individually at the moment. So it's a problem that everyone would like to have, but trust me, when you have it, it's really crap. <laughs> um, my, one of my successes is starting to think about, and Sean was probably one of the ones who started thinking, Mission I, getting Mission I to think about it, but developing the next leaders in our industry. What we're gonna start is a school and university-based intern program where we take people on and we, we give them a, a, a two-day education program where they're gonna pay for that and then they get a six-week work experience guideline and they'll get paid for that, or for some of it. Some of it is the observation work experience, some of it they'll be coaching some of our, um, some of our people. And then you know, at, at the end, we wanna be able to pick two people from that list and say, look, would you like a job? As part of your uni degree, you're gonna work here. And then at the end of that, you get an, you know, like we talk to you about employment at Vector Health. Um, so far, like um, from talking to universities and talking to schools, they're really positive about it. Um, so that's something that I've really thought about, so how can I make sure that I always have a generation? So when you start getting bigger as your business grows, one of the things you must have is, is staff availability. Like keep your resumes and keep talking to people. That's one thing that I haven't done as well as I should have in the past, and now I've started to. So when people apply for a job, I'll make sure I ring them personally and say, I don't have anything right now, but I think I may have in a couple of months. Would you like me to call you? And so they'll say yes, and then you can call them straight away and talk to them, because you've already almost pre-qualified them on the phone. This is, um, how do I press play on this thing? Here. This is a bit of a video that, um, can you just press play on that? So just, there we go. Oh, oh. You just double click on it, I think. Yeah, it works a lot. You have to take the video back to the start, I think, because it's already in. That's it. So this is a video of one of our athletes. Um, I've coached her since she was um, 13 years of age. Um, yeah, right. So um, one, of her, one of her athletes, I've coached her since she was 13. I just have this philosophy that if you're not trying to win at everything that you do, then I don't know why you get up in the morning. Like in business, you have to try and be better than you were every single day than you were yesterday. That's what I try my hardest to do. Um, so every single day I get up, I'm thinking about what can I do better today? How can I, how can I help this person be better today? This kid here, she embodies that in her business. Like I'm hoping that she'll end up working for us next year um, because she's gonna be a fantastic coach. Um, I've been sort of mentoring her for three years and she broke a world record the other day. She's 17 years of age, she's 61 kilos and she benched 85 kilos. But you can, you can look at that thing and if you don't, if you, you know, you don't bench press a lot or whatever, like I hate bench press, but you know, 
this kid here like to do that on a stage after what's happened over the last two years, what it shows is she's got an incredible amount, she's made of something inside. And that's what you've got to look within yourself. You've got to be made of something. You've got to be prepared to fight. Um, I can say that I've been fighting for about a year now, like since I moved into my new gym. Like it's not, it's not easy like making an expansion that, that big. But, you know, when you look at kids like that, that's why you get up in the morning, whether I coach or whether one of my other coaches coach someone like that. And I've got other athletes that have done similar things. But that's why you get up in the morning. You see people win, you, you know that you've transformed their life. So to me, that's what MPE has done to me. It's transformed my life, transformed my belief system, transformed how I think about myself and how I think about my business. And so if you're thinking about signing up, then you can wait and you can go away and spend three months and mucking about. But if you do it right now, you'll be really uncomfortable, I can guarantee you. But it works. Because if it can work for me, it can work for anyone. Um, so for me, where to next is I'm trying to increase my customer profitability so that I don't have to work with as many people to make as much money. Um, increase my sales by 30% this year, that's what I'm attempting to do. Um, but creating more residual income, so things like nutritional, um, nutritional products and that sort of thing, so that people are buying from you without you having to sell all the time. And then improve my systems and keep working on my leadership so that I keep developing coaches and keep developing people. So I'm a huge fan of like Vince Lombardi, he's one of the best coaches of all time. And this is one of my favourite quotes and something that I almost say to myself every day. Like you don't just win once, you have to win all the time. And winning isn't necessarily coming first, it's about being better than you were yesterday. Alright. So just before I go, I just want to say thanks, like especially to the guys at NPE and the community here that has supported me. Um, I know that sometimes like, I'm fairly straight up and I annoy people probably, but... I really, really appreciate like, the opportunity to be able to get up and help people because once upon a time, I was sitting down there looking at someone else doing this and thinking, well, I want to do that one day. So I hope that I can help inspire and motivate some people in the room to be better than you were yesterday. Thanks.